We have witnessed this morning a severe bombing of Pearl Harbor by enemy planes. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese military attacked the American naval base at Pearl Harbor, killing more than 2,000 soldiers and decimating the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet. America was going to war. As news of the attack hit the wires, Oregonians held their breath. Some of their own were on the island. A local college football team caught in the chaos. Just days earlier, the 1941 Willamette Bearcats had arrived in Honolulu. Traveling over 2,000 miles by sea, they were in town for the Shrine Bowl, a series of exhibition games in America's normally peaceful paradise. Having won the Northwest Conference back home, the team was eager to test themselves against tough competition. Quarterback Ken Jacobson brought his camera along, snapping this picture from the team's hotel overlooking iconic Waikiki Beach. It was the perfect end to a successful season. On December 6, the Shrine Bowl began. The team lost their first game to the University of Hawaii. It would be the only game the Bearcats played. The next morning, confusion. Something had happened. Rumors of an attack at the nearby naval base. Within hours, martial law was declared. The football teams, players, and staff were called into action. A military car came by, and uh, one of the officers, there was an officer in the car, and stuck his head out the window and said, have you men been mobilized? Been mobilized yet? And they said, no. And he said, well, you are now. Author Bill McWilliams, an Air Force veteran, wrote a book on the Bearcats trip to Hawaii, Scrimmage for War. In the days after the attack, leaders feared a land invasion could be coming. The Willamette football team and others were armed and placed on guard. They were handed wartime duties that uh, had them occupied right up until the time they got on board the ship to come home. They were having to dig uh, lay barbed wire and dig firing positions. It would be nearly two weeks before it was safe to evacuate the team. With only a few hours' notice, they were scrambled to the SS Coolidge for the journey home. Overcrowded and filled with wounded soldiers, the team did what they could to help, supporting medical staff and preparing lifeboats in the event they needed to abandon ship. On Christmas Day, 1941, the team arrived in San Francisco, their Hawaiian nightmare finally over. Many would go on to serve in the war, but none would forget December 7th, the day they defended their country on the sandy beaches of Waikiki.